Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll explore an exciting feature of Visual Studio, the Remote File Explorer. This tool enables you to browse and manage remote file systems directly within VS, making cross-platform development on Linux or Mac seamless. Let's dive into its features and see how it can streamline your workflow. To find the Remote File Explorer, go to the View menu, and then select Remote File Explorer from the dropdown. To connect the Remote File Explorer to a remote server, use the Connection Manager, accessible via the Tools menu, Options, Cross-Platform, and then Connection Manager. You can also access it by clicking Open the Connection Manager button in the Remote File Explorer that appears when it's disconnected. In the Connection Manager window, click Add, fill out the required fields, and hit Connect to save the configuration. For a detailed overview of the Connection Manager, check out this video. With our connection added, let's go back to the Remote File Explorer. Use the drop-down menu at the top to select your connection. Now you'll have instant access to your remote files. Now that we're connected, let's explore the file system. Simply click on the folder icons in the Explorer pane to navigate through the directory structure. Each folder can be expanded to reveal its contents. You can also navigate the Remote File Explorer via your keyboard. You can navigate up and down using the up and down arrow keys. The right arrow expands the directory, and the left arrow closes it. You can also use the tab key to cycle between the search box, the tree view, and the operation log table. You can manually refresh the files from the remote system. Select the specific folder you want to target and select Refresh in the context menu that opens when you right click. This ensures that your local copies are up to date with changes made on the remote server. The Remote File Explorer simplifies file searching in your remote environment. To search for files, select the desired directory and enter a keyword in the search bar at the top. Matching files will instantly appear in the results. For efficiency, we don't automatically search the root directory every time, but you have the option to do so if needed. Please note, however, that searching the entire machine may take longer to complete. When you select a file or directory, you will have certain options available to you. For this video, I'll demonstrate using these options via the context menu that opens with the right click, but all of these options are also available through the toolbar at the top. To upload files or folders, choose Upload your directory to the folder name or Upload files to the folder name. I'm going to upload a folder, and it populates here. You can also download files or folders from the remote system onto your local system by selecting the item in the File Explorer and selecting Download. Deleting files and folders is just as straightforward. Select the file or folder that you want to delete and hit delete in the context menu. Confirm the deletion when prompted and the item will be removed. For symbolic links, if you double click the item, it navigates you to the file it's linked to in the tree view. One of the standout features of the Remote File Explorer is the ability to edit files directly from VS. Open a file by double clicking on it, make your changes in the editor, and save it as you normally would with the save icon or by using Control S. We can do a sanity check and see if the file is saved properly by outputting the contents in the integrated terminal and see if the changes are there. We can get the file path easily by right-clicking the item in the Remote File Explorer and copying the full path. We can make sure that it's the correct file in case there are multiple files with the same name by hovering over the File tab in the Active Workspace. Side note, this tab is an easy way to distinguish between local and remote files too, since the remote ones have a remote tag. Anyways, let's cat this file using the path we just got. Cool, we can see the changes. If you ever get lost in the file explorer after expanding a bunch of directories, the house icon in the top toolbar will navigate you back to your home directory. You can also open multiple remote file explorers to access various remote machines at the same time. Just click the New Window button on the top left and select your connection from the drop-down menu. You can navigate between the remote file explorers using the tabs at the bottom. For whatever action you take, you can see the running list of operations and their statuses by looking at the log down below. If you right-click on certain operations, you can also see options to cancel a currently running operation, go to the remote path, and go to the local path in the File Explorer. The last two options can be helpful when double-checking paths after download and upload operations to make sure the files are where you intended for them to be. 
The settings icon lets you modify the remote file explorer settings, of which there is currently only one option, which is to enable or disable dynamic file icons for extensionless files. This is automatically turned on by default, but if you have a lot of extensionless files on your remote machine, turning the setting off could give you a very slight performance boost. As you just saw, the Remote File Explorer has some useful features. Now let's go through common issues you may run into and their typical remedies. Sometimes the connection to the remote system fails. This could be due to needing to update the remote connection's properties in the Connection Manager. For example, if a private key pair was changed. This could also be due to the SSH server not running on the remote machine. We would need to restart the SSH server if so. After fixing the issue, you should be able to hit the reconnect button in the remote file explorer to try again. If you try to save a file that has already been changed on the remote machine since you've opened and modified it using the remote file explorer, you'll see a pop-up. Then you'll decide whether you want to overwrite the file or not. Another common issue is not having the proper permissions to perform certain actions, such as adding a directory. As you can see, it failed with the permissions error. When you add a connection in the Connection Manager, you log in as a specific user, and the permissions you have in the Remote File Explorer are based on that specific user. So actions such as uploading, downloading, creating new directories, opening and editing files are all going to be affected by the permissions of that user. Since the Connection Manager supports multiple connections to the same machine under different users, you may need to double check that you are using the right connection for the actions you want to be able to perform through the Remote File Explorer. To check your permissions for a particular item, you can hover over the item and it will list the permissions that the user defined in the current connection has. You can also check what user is currently connected by looking at the top of the Remote File Explorer. Having improper permissions can also prevent you from editing a read-only file. In this case, you'll have to modify the file's permissions on the Linux remote system in order to edit it. Let's try that again. We have to overwrite. And there you have it, a quick tour of the Remote File Explorer in Visual Studio. This powerful tool brings your remote environments closer than ever, enhancing productivity and simplifying remote development. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out Scott Hanselman's video on the Remote File Explorer and happy coding.